with India with 1.4 billion people needs to vaccinate. So Rahul, I'd like to hear from you, your point of view and possibly a solution. Right up front, you said that voluntary licensing is the solution. So give us a sense of what uh, the detailed solution is. Right. Uh, so I will start uh, with the part of the question where you said the entire population needs to be vaccinated. So uh, see, we are already uh, re reading some news about uh, the, the booster jab. That is the third jab that is needed in the countries where the majority of population is currently getting vaccinated. So it's right. not just the problem is uh, not just about the present situation. It's just that we are middle. We are in the middle of a long drawn war with a lot of yeah. many battles, right? With the first wave, second wave. And as of now, before I get into uh, the technicality of policy, what we need is, a, I want to be, I want to stay apolitical, but what, what we need is a uniform narrative from the government. We have seen different ministries, different departments talking about different targets of procuring the doses. There is no clarity. As far as the pricing is concerned, that's a different issue altogether, but accessibility and availability is the major issue because pricing is something which is a tussle between state and center and availability of raw material, other issues. And one more point is that there is, I want to highlight, I'm just uh, trying to tread here on a related issue, which is that there were a lot of uh, uh, news uh, about the exports that were being done, in, especially in January, February, and uh, those early parts of the year when the pandemic was silent, so there was no second wave around. So those exports, now we are getting to know that those exports were, uh, exports were part of contractual obligations of the vaccine manufacturers. So uh, the primary issue is that whether the government uh, made a blunder in broadcasting the contractual obligations of private entities as their ex uh, export initiatives. So I, I don't have any authentic evidence where I can rely and pinpoint that these many doses were part of contractual obligations and these many doses were procured by government out of their free will, which were meant for export. So now in light of these facts, which are in public domain, a debate around trips and all becomes moot because whatever we say, the government is on a different tangent altogether. So I, um, in conclusion, I would want that the first is to set a narrative that uh, suppose there was an affidavit in the court that said that compulsory lesson is not the solution. So whether trips waiver or IP waiver is the solution and if yes, how will it impact the situation at ground level when cases are increasing, deaths are multiplying. So in essence, I would want that policy to be connected with the real life event. Then only we can have a practical solution on board. Yeah, understood. Uh, uh, let me bring in Rahul again into the conversation. Rahul, uh, you were very candid in the way you said that we need uniformity, we need uh, apoliticalness, and we need, we need to have the pragmatic approach to be able to solve it. Where do you think we'll, we're moving ahead with it? And what do you think will actually happen over the next four to six weeks. Right. right. So, yeah, thanks. So one thing I realize is that there have been multiple reports that state governments are trying to procure the vaccine on their own from international manufacturers. There have been tenders that have been issued. So in light of these developments, what I see is that uh, uh, one major issue I anticipate is that, for example, if and all a state is able to procure a vaccine that is not uh, yet available to the central government. So what are the indemnity issues? What are the other issues we are, uh, uh, you know, anticipating? Because some of the manufacturers like Pfizer has denied, uh, I don't know the correct uh, company, one company has denied uh, to a state that we cannot supply to you. So I want to, uh, what I would expect is that in next four to six weeks, all the stakeholders should sit together, be it central government and state government, and then bring out a uniform plan that this is what will happen. So that as a uh, citizen, I am clear that, okay, I am comfortable waiting for next four weeks also for the dose of my myself or my family members, but, but I should not be left uh, to the, you know, mercy of this platform where there are hacks by the techies where you can book the slot for 40 kilometers away, you can go to vaccination center and you can take the slot of some rural place going from a city, like this all is happening, I have seen in my close network, right? So I need to make these, these things you can't blame on people because we have no clarity. Whatever is available, we'll jump on that. So we need some clarity as to what will happen and this has to be uniformity. And once that is there, at least the storm will settle as far as the vaccination is concerned. No matter the doses are limited, at least be upfront with it, acknowledge the problem and then give a way out to the citizens that, okay, if you are healthy, if you are in the healthier age bracket, no comorbidities, you can wait and let others, you know, uh, be in the priority to get the vaccination, the frontline workers, people who are teaching, like, you know, when it comes to lawyers, uh, we are sitting at our home. We have the facility of high-speed internet, video facility, but court staff is there. 
So treat a particular segment from each sector and let them be at the front line to get the vaccine so that the quantity can be optimized rather than getting into debate. And then, you know, there's chaos at the public level. That would be my expectation. Thank you. Uh... Uh, they have not placed the orders in time. So if whenever the phrase is being used from government side that we are the manufacturing uh, hub for vaccines, all of those are contractual obligations. We are not doing it off, off our from our own free R&D bill. So that means our R&D initiative is lower as compared to the contractual obligation. So we need to balance this scale to make sure that our R&D is able to afford vaccination for entire country. Because see, to be very honest, no, uh, the, uh, the question was that the countries that are talking about IP waiver are the same that are, you know, supplying raw material and they have excess supply. So it was expected that the jurisdictions and the countries that have ultra premium research facility will only come up with vaccine and the supply quantity. So the government should have ordered in time. And now since that ship has sailed, we need to acknowledge the mistake and move forward with a collaborative approach.